Hello, this is Stefan Evla, and this is going to be analysis of the GBV case from Chapter 8, Bodhi Electronics, a difficult case. So let's get some background information. Uh, so our main protagonist, De Denise Norris, she's the account manager for an audit firm, and they're on an engagement where she now needs to approach the controller of the company, uh, Alan Morris, and they both have some questions and issues that need to be addressed. Morris has some questions uh, regarding some accounting practices stuff, as far as like why is the firm doing additional testing of accounts receivable, as well as why they hired a consultant um, for the information systems. And Norris uh, has some issues that are affecting the timeliness of her engagement. Uh, the staff that she's dealing with from the client are being untimely in their support, um, and they're very closed off, rude, and overall unhelpful, which is making it harder for them to, to complete the job on time. And also, there's an issue between Morse and one of the audit members um, due to personality differences, according to him, that she wants to address. So the first issue that we want to talk about is the role of the client um, in the audit engagements. I think it's it's uh, important because there's a, there's a line that, that should be drawn as far as independence and, and making sure that we have the shareholders in, in the best restrooms um, and not the client. Um, but the client is also important to us. So um, any questions regarding their own accounting practices? They had a question, Morris had a question about $1 million in revenue that wasn't booked. Um, those should be all dealt on their end. It shouldn't be the role of an external auditor um, or accounting person to, to do the books for them. And so it's important that they, they those two things remain separate, that the actual recording and operational side of things are separate from an audit. Um, getting an, a third party opinion. Um, questions regarding audit practices such as what kind of testing they're doing and stuff, um, they can always be referenced back to, to any type of guidance, uh, GAP or, or uh, IFERS depending on where you're at. And, uh, and, and that's, that's probably about as far as you want to go. You want to tell them that oh, we need to pull additional procedures for this due to some errors, if you have errors or whatever it is, but you don't want to go into detail about your actual testing so that it's it's not as easy for, the, you don't want the client to, to know how to get around the testing. Um, and as far as uh, the staffing of the audit goes, that is also, again, it's important to keep a good relationship with the client. So I think that needs to be addressed um, in, a, in a professional manner. And perhaps it is necessary to that the that, that person is pulled off the engagement or perhaps they're not at fault and some sort of easing out of the engagement is, is in, in order. Um, overall, the verdict is it, it's going to be unethical for, for any type of crossing between client operations and the audit operations. I think those two things have to remain separate in order to maintain independence and subject uh, objectivity um, and, and in order to be ethical in our accounting practices. Uh, so Norris is going to have to be on the defense on this. Uh, the, according to the text, the client's very aggressive in this manner. Um, and so she needs to think about what role she, is her leadership, ethical leadership, going to play. Um, what does she want it to play? I think the best thing is for her to, to just stand her ground and, and set the best example in the worst of situations. The text talks about how females are often uh, treated much different, differently than males in, in a confrontation. And so she needs to, to get a lot of support around her and make sure she keeps a stand on, on doing what's best for the audit and for the shovelers and but also do her best to, to you know ride ride the, the line and keep a good relationship with the client. To do that she can use some um some levers. Her biggest biggest help that she can have is going to be the reforming of the importance of the audit, not just to the firm but also to the client as well. They they both want it to be successful. They both want it to, to, to be done correctly, hopefully. And so I think she just needs to, to emphasize that in their discussions. And her most persuasive argument is probably going to be any type of arrangement letter or agreements uh, that state when the deadlines are supposed to be. That way she can say, hey, this, this needs to get done on time and your staff aren't helping us get it done on time. Um, and have evidence to back that up as well as any type of AICPA guidance that's going to help. I think in the end, uh, it's most important as a CPA or anyone in accounting really, um, to be able to, to know the line, point out the line, not only to yourself, but to the client and to those around you that you're working with and for, 
Um, I think everyone needs to just have uh, as clear going into jobs and engagements as clear as as day can be. Um, what what's going to be ethical? What's your point of view of eth what's ethical and everything? And so what's supposed to be right? So that's my presentation. Thank you.